My name is Doug Menue. I'm a documentary photographer and filmmaker. In 1985, Steve Jobs was forced out of Apple Computer and announced he was going to start over and build a supercomputer for education. And that got my attention and I reached out through friends and proposed that I be allowed to document him building the next computer with his team from beginning and inception through to shipping the product. You know, I've been to the North Pole, I crossed the Sahara, I've been kidnapped at gunpoint, I shot the drug wars, the homeless crisis, the AIDS crisis. Nothing, nothing in my 30-year career, nothing compares to being in Silicon Valley in those days. Nothing was exciting as being in the room and listening to Steve tell us what the future was going to bring. Steve was demanding of really impossible things. They wanted to put the mainframe, the power of a mainframe, in a one-foot cube. One day we were looking at the prototype and I just said to Steve innocently, I said, so what do you want to accomplish with this cube? What are you going to do with this thing? And he turned to me and he looked me in the eye and he said, I want some kid to cure cancer in his dorm room at Stanford. It was electrifying. And that was, that was a moment where I recognized the power he had because I was just speechless. I saw in his eyes that he believed it was possible. And because he believed it was possible, the team was willing to believe. They were willing to sacrifice anything, and so was Steve, anything to achieve the impossible. You know, I rarely saw him ever let go or not think. He was just so, so intense. It was exhausting being around him. One day we were at a picnic. He took us all to a company picnic and he gave his team a break. He'd been cracking the whip and beating them for months. And I looked over and there was Steve kicking a beach ball. And I was like, no way. <laughs> I just couldn't believe he was really relaxing. So I just took it as almost symbolic. This is how Steve would relax if he could. So, so I called a picture of Steve Jobs pretending to be human. You know, and in the end, he got back to work at the picnic. One of my favorite pictures is the day Ross Perot came in with $20 million to fund Next. Steve thought, wouldn't it be cool to take Ross to the abandoned warehouse and give this elaborate formal luncheon? And there he told Ross, we're going to build the world's most advanced robotic assembly line. No human hands will touch it. And he got him really excited, and, and Ross wrote the check. But it never fulfilled expectations. They never shipped. He thought they would sell 10,000 computers a month, and I think they sold 10,000 computers in the whole life cycle. They had to lay off 300-some-odd people, and the factory had to be closed. Next was a failure for the hardware, um, but ultimately Next was an amazing, amazing success story. After a decade of struggle, all of a sudden Apple buys Next Step from Steve, the operating system, for 400 plus million dollars. Steve gets a seat on the board and begins his climb back to the top. Everything Apple does at the heart of it is the original Next operating system, the Next Step operating system, which was written beginning in 86, 87, 88. The lesson I take from Steve is very simple. He was being ripped apart in the press by the end. They were making fun of him, he was humiliated. But he never gave up against all evidence to the contrary. You have to believe that your vision will win out.